Hello everybody, I welcome you all to today's video. In today's video, we are going to see a very about a very special institute, a CSIR Associated Institute, and that institute is nothing but CCMB, that is Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology situated in Hyderabad. So today we are going to see how to get a PhD in CCMB Hyderabad. Not just this, we are also going to see what are the different labs and what are the different research projects that goes on at CCMB. So do watch the video till the end. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you on anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's start the topic. So first, I'm going to talk about the eligibility for you to get a PhD in CCMB, right? So first is you, you should have done a master's degree in any branch of science. So that is what first part of eligibility or you, you could have also done a bachelor's degree in engineering, pharmacy or medicine, which has to be a four years course. So if you are, if you've done a master's degree, your master's degree could be of one or two years, but of course you would have done a bachelor's degree as well. But if you are joining after your bachelor's degree, then it should be either in engineering, pharmacy or medicine. The, the final year of qualifying degree program. So students who are in their final, final years of either bachelor's or their master's degree can also apply for this particular PhD program. But then the condition is that after you finish the uh, you know, final year, it should uh, comply with the minimum uh, you know, grade that is required for applying for PhD. Now, what is the selection process? What are the different process that happens if you have to join in P if you have to join PhD in CCMB, right? So first is you have to apply online. So uh, in their website, whenever the dates are being announced, you're supposed to uh, send an online application for PhD and that application will be screened and then you will have to write a computer-based written test, which is there around 17 in 17 different centers uh, in India. So you will first have to write a computer based written test. And after you write the test, they will check if you have a valid fellowship. We'll see about this valid fellowship in a while. But once you they check that you have a valid fellowship, then you will be shortlisted to appear for an interview at CCMB. So this particular PhD at CCMB is, uh, you know, is based upon both your computer test, that is your preliminary test, as well as the result of your interview, along with the fellowship that is required for you to enter PhD. So these are the different process. So once uh, you have been selected for PhD at CCMB, then you will be uh, you will be uh, associated with the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research that is ACSIR. So this is the academy under which you will be registered as a PhD student. Now, what are the different fellowships that are valid for CCMB PhD? Let's see that. Now, different fellowships or examinations that are needed, right? So first is national level fellowships, right? So any national level fellowships of JRF or SRF, right? So for example, it could be CSIR, it could be UGC, DBT or even ICMR. So any of these uh, national level fellowships for JRF or SRF is valid. Secondly, you could be a DST Inspire Fellow uh, or you could have any other equivalent fellowship. So these are the different fellowships under which you can apply for PhD at CCMB. Apart from the fellowships, there are also the, these examinations. That is, if you are from BE or BTEC degree and you've not given any of these uh, fellowship examinations or but uh, you want to enter for PhD, then yes, you can have a GATE score of at least 85 percentile, right? So this is the eligibility for a BE or a BTEC student. If you are a B Pharma student, then what is the eligibility? The el eligibility is a GPAT score of at least 85 percentile. So you could be, you could either have the fellowship or you could be one of these students having these scores in GATE or GPAT. So this is what is the fellowship or examination, uh, you know, qualification required for uh, applying for PhD at CCMB. 
the next uh, major question who is who cannot apply right so if you have a csir ugc net lectureship only fellowship then you are not eligible to apply for phd at ccmb you need to have the jrf or the srf fellowship secondly if you are a msc or mtech or m pharma candidate with a gate or gpat score and you want to enter with your gate or gpat score and not with a fellowship then yes you are not eligible to apply for this phd right so it's only for gate is only for b tech or be or be and gpat is only for b pharma students so if you have finished mtech m pharma or msc it is mandatory for you to have uh, you know given any of those examinations and cleared it for you to apply for phd at ccmb now we have seen uh, all the selection process what is the eligibility what is the qualification and everything so now let's jump on and see what are the research areas that happens at ccmb right so there are different themes uh, under which research happens at ccmb first is the developmental biology second is structural biology next is genomics and epigenetic regulation cell and stem cells biology wildlife conservation and and ecology as well as crop improvement so these are the different themes or different topics under which uh, you know research and projects and labs are uh, being carried forward now we will see one by one about all of these themes and what are the labs and what are the projects that they do right so before that i want to tell you about biotechnica and how we help all the phd students to get a one stop solution for you at biotechnica right so if we keep updating our uh, website as well as our youtube channel about what are the different phd options opportunities that are coming up for you when can you apply what is the eligibility and everything so biotechnica is going to be a one stop solution for you right so do subscribe so do subscribe and press the notification button for you so that you do not miss any updates from biotechnica now moving on so we will first start with the developmental biology right so what are the different labs and what is the different research projects that happens first is the work on neurological disorders second is muscle stem cells then the meiosis in plants using arabidopsis as a model organism next is the research on nervous system next uh, using the models such as zebra fish marine chordates as well as echinoderms to study developmental biology and lastly the about the neural stem cells so these are the different projects that are happening uh, at this particular lab of developmental biology the next topic is structural biology right so what are the different projects and labs that that are present at a uh, structural biology so the first is membrane and receptor biology second is dna based diagnostics third is nanobiology fourth is photo autistic spectroscopy inotropic glutamate receptors non coding rna mediated gene silencing pathway right the next is function correlations in peptide antibiotics the next is civil and mechanical engineering aspects which are present within the cells so these are the different projects or diff, uh, no various themes that happens under structural biology at ccmb next is the genomics and epigenetic regulation right so the first is variation in genomes of indians is being studied at ccmb and the type 2 diabetes mellitus and chronic pancreatics these two uh, diseases are also very deeply studied here the impact of endogamy on health and diseases of south asians in particular is being studied the next lab is the colon and breast cancer the other labs that focuses on genomics and epigenetic our role of snps as diagnostic markers as well as embryonic development so these are the different projects or different labs that happens at ccmb particularly on genomics and epigenetic regulation 
The next lab that we're going to see is the cell and stem cell biology. First is the heat shock protein or HSPs, microenvironment regulating stem cells. Next is function of protein, optineurin, quiescence program and its benefits for stem cell function. What is quiescence? Well, let us know in the comment section, we'll take up as a discussion. The self renewal and differentiation of stem cells as well as cell cycle regulatory mechanisms. These are the different projects that happens in cell and stem cell biology. Next, the next lab that we're going to see is the wildlife conservation and ecology, right? So what are the different projects that happens under this uh, theme? First is conservation of genetics of Indian endangered species. Second is study studies about, about habitat fragmentation. Next, about tropical forests, reproductive ecology, climate change impacts on forest regeneration, ecological dynamics in human modified forests as well as population structure gene flow gene flow as well as landscape genetics of tiger so these are the different projects of wildlife conservation that happens at ccmb lastly we are going to look at the agriculture uh, side of uh, research that happens at ccmb that is on crop improvement. So the first, there is one lab that works on crop improvement and they work on bacterial virulence and plant defense. They work on rice functional genomics, pest resistance in rice, as well as novel markers for agronomic traits. So these are the different uh, research that goes on in the crop improvement lab of CCMB. With this, I come to the end of this particular discussion. I'm sure that this video was really helpful if you're looking at applying for PhD in CCMB or even if you want to just know what is the research that happens in CCMB and if you want to apply for it and be a part of it. So I'm sure it was really super helpful. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.